Hello everyone, this is Blender Guppy. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the random flow and creative flow add-on to create um, something like the sci-fi canisters in my own products in Gumroad and in Blender Market. So uh, let me show you the entire asset collection. So I guess this will be in the app. Uh, in the asset browser and in the user library and t so yeah and as you can see these are mostly quads and optimized for low to mid uh scene and yeah, I did use random flow and creative flow for this to create measures that you can use for production. And this is a mixture of unit meshes and also meshes that has uh, separate elements inside them which you can also uh, quickly uh, select using the uh, vertex groups. So we have the brace and here we have the spokes. So those are the spokes. Select, so that's, those are the grill, grills. And we have the screw, which is this one. Okay, so I'm going to show you how, how I made this and also um, the uh, panel cuts. This, this is also merged in the main body. And none of this, you can tell that, you can tell that uh, sound bits are produced using the uh, random flow add on. So you can make your own set of assets and save it in the asset browser. Let's go back to the outliner. Outliner. Okay, shift F9. So let's change this to cylinder. So we're not out of the cylinder yet. So next video, I'm going to show you one of those meteorites or asteroids that I'm making with uh, with a base on it. So let's make an asset. And let's make it the default. And the default vertex count is 32. So optimally, when I'm using a uh, random flow to give me the best result, I'm using something like 64, but we're aiming for something a little, a little lower than 64. So we'll start with, we'll uh, use 32 vertices. And we're going to create an asymmetrical asymmetrical model. So by the way, someone uh, said that auto mirror is gone from on the flow. It is not gone. It is in the mesh sub menu in object mode. And there we go. In edit mode, in the mesh sub menu displays the operators that are uh, that only works in edit mode and in object mode operators that only works in object mode so you have the auto mirror here but we also have auto mirror in creative flow and it is it is exposed outside so i'm going to use this because it's much uh, faster i'm going to use this side as well this so this side x y and z there we go and create a longer body S eight O oh. control B S uh six for the segments auto smooth and let's create an indentation here so it's not about actually unimishing so it's also great uh, it's also uh, useful 
if you just uh, if uh, for example if you're creating pipes like that so it uh, sometimes it makes much more sense if the pipes are actually if the pipe is actually just a um, separate set of faces instead of being joined to the uh, source body so you don't have to actually uh, play with the topology and sometimes with this kind of topology any kind of uh, extrusion can lead to uh, shading distortions so it's much better that the pipe itself is a separate set of faces or a separate object in object mode or if it is inside the, me the mesh in edit mode a separate set of faces from the source object okay um let's create a bunch of uh, spikes here let's go around so we'll use this view and draw faces press c on open space so the uh, marker or the 3d cursor positions itself on the center origin of the object and when we draw this so rem remember that the uh, marker is the depth or the depth or where the or how far the draw object will be created based on the uh, viewport angle so that's the distance so when we draw it here it's going to be created here in this distance so the depth okay let's create the um let's just use the box pressing one and there we go so drawing space and then you have the controls here for the uh, thickness and the offset oh and by the way the in preferences in the settings about random flow and you can see it'll help for font size random flow and What is that? <laughs> Creative flow. You have the helper font size. Okay, so that pertains to the. I forgot to mention it in the update video. So that pertains to the font size of the helper UI when you draw or extract faces or using auto, auto mirror. You can make it bigger for those uh, uh, whose monitor are ultra um, high definition. So, uh, probably too small for them you can go to preferences of each add-on and increase the resolution uh, increase this value here to make the fonts larger so selecting everything okay uh, this is already when we draw this already has a mirror if it even if it's not using symmetry this already has a mirror modifier so we can just select the object uh, use the draw modifiers and use mirror modifier activate the z axis and we're going to select this and go to extras fast circle array using the z axis and origin i uh, should have muted that okay, let's use eight and So we're not going to uh, apply this yet into a real mesh. So we can still, using the draw modifiers operator, we can still uh, affect its thickness. Okay. And we're with the spokes. We're going to just let it be a separate element inside the mesh when we join it later using the uh, in run flow in extras using the join objects pretty, uh, pretty cool uh, set up uh, a pretty cool functionality join objects and also its counterpart uh, the split mesh I'm going to save this as canister demo. So in case we crash, I uh, can 
bring it back. Okay. Um, I'm going to try out if I can create something with random loop extrude, then uh, join or fuse together that result using the uh, merge objects operator. And then use it as a separate element inside the inside the edit mode of the source object. So I'm going to use this one and inset inwards. So there is a bit of an offset in the center, so I'm just gonna fix that. Okay, and we're going to use uh, it here. Okay, right uh, here, it ends here. We're going to use random panels and hopefully merge the result. If you've selected the entire mesh, then you don't have to merge and just delete the source object afterwards. We save and generate the Patterns. Okay, let's get rid of the um actually um if we use subdivision this is gonna we can still merge when we use subdivision but the um uh the vertices will no longer be aligned with each other so you can see here no there's no vertices here oops okay so uh i forgot that so when what we have to do instead is use manual cuts uh do, using mark sharp edges so we don't have to subdivide to create the pattern we have to create the pattern manually uh, So you can use this for uh, other than concept art. You just have to change your workflow a bit. Okay, so it's not completely useless outside the uh, borders or confines of concept art. Concept art. So I can I I can still see people uh, commenting, especially on Boolean add-ons. So you know the usual troll comments about what about in what about ingons, what about quads. <laughs> that is only relevant in the end process of the modeling. If they're using it for production, then they're gonna quantify the result of that. What you're seeing when you, when we or they are uh, using the tools that generate ingon meshes, and at that stage, uh, the main focus is on the design, not the topology. Topology comes afterwards if the workflow demands that you have to generate production meshes okay so you don't have to comment stuff like that okay, um, let's So this is kind of like a preview and then I just I just control uh undo it control Z mark shot can uh you can also use random flow for this okay 
main difference for now is that you have to clip the center and with random panels uh with panel cut cutter or the panel cut add-on you don't have to do that 1.2 this is, should be 1.4 okay i'll just have to do a ghost a ghost upload to, to repair this this should be 1.4 You can see uh this is much more uh panel cut is much more it's much faster you don't have to actually uh you use any of the clip center of uh, properties and but this is mainly for your base resolution while While well, random panels uh, will operate, uh, can operate or is um, much better at operating at subdivided uh, results. One, two, three. And control and mark sharp. Let's see the result. Uh, okay, now okay, but it's resulting into how about this one and this one? Mark sharp and yeah, I think that could work. We can also create uh triangles, I guess. But we'd have to no. I have to bevel this. Maybe it's still possible. Wait. Uh without actually creating creating distortions on the mesh. How about we bevel this? No. Mark sharp. This will be where the where we will try the random loop extrude. Okay, a bit of a preview. So with panel cutter, you just have to set the panel size to 100% to create the effect. The same as panel cutter, but with panel cutter, uh, this is more, like I've said before, this is more optimized for manual cutting using mark sharp edges and also works best with the source resolution or the basic resolution without being subdivided. Okay, so let's emulate what's the uh setting? Well zero zero seventy two zero zero ninety one zero zero eight oops point zero zero eight point zero zero nine Okay, um, yeah, save, because we will try to merge this, actually forgot how the merging works with mirror, does it work with mirror, or do I have to reapply the mirror? Angel emerge. So 
for it merge into the object. Okay. But we have the just clear sharp. Okay. Now we have our base resolution with the merged. So it's Shino mesh. It's uh the panel cut result is not a separate object. Okay, um what else? Okay, so you can see uh all it needs right now is really some textures. Okay, uh well, let's create some let's do uh, let's draw another geometry. Press C to get depth on the center and number two to uh, to use the polygonal press shift to snap the angle to 45 degrees and pressing shift at the end of the uh the shape and alt it is will snap to the first to the first uh, point and then maintaining this position let go of the, the keys and press space to go to uh, the second model stage where you set the thickness and the offset press space to finish i'm going to try and, uh, and select all the faces and then fast array eight the uh stretch six Four, so it's on this space, and then draw modifiers activate the z axis. Okay, that. and we can also, I think, re uh, add some panel screws. Okay, cu uh, custom captive. This will also be a separate mesh inside the edit mode and give it some random rotation. Get rid of the um, panel screws in the center line. Deactivate just mirror. Same here. Panel screws, top table. And Oh, there's no. S this is just a single piece of island. It will not create any bolts for this one, though. This will create one. Let's see. Okay, why is it? Because of the faces. <laughs> Use the radius, the margin. Okay. Size is too big. You don't have to repeat the operation. Press period and select individual origin, then scale. Set it back to median point. Okay, now we have these elements, uh, design elements. You know how I always have those grunge effects in my models. I'm really, I really like those uh, Star Wars aesthetics, you know, kind of gritty technology, old, uh, old rusty tech. And I think we can place here a intersect object. It's going to be a separate element inside the mesh. And it's going to be sort of like a knob. 
Turn to 45 degrees. Uh, wait. There we go. Okay, so now is yeah I can I think this is good and also a little tip if you're extruding something also I uh, uh, you can draw with uh, let's draw let's draw the arrow or the triangle that we're, we talked about earlier where it created the, uh, the shading distortion Destroy it here. Uh, no, 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 no. Right here or here? Let's draw it here. But instead of drawing it using uh, draw faces, I'm going to show you some, another uh, technique um, active. Whoops. Um, view and intersect intersect faces draw so it draw the shape of the two overlapping objects and xc you can see there's no there's a bit of a distortion but it's not that noticeable control t and just clean the now let's extrude this manually but instead of extruding this like that you can see that in this view there's no way to tell if there's the uh, arrow there should be pointing up also okay uh pointing up to the opening here not there there's nothing there c control t of j f9 set to 180 degrees and it got rid of this so j one open one two three four one two three four one two three okay so mostly quads and a bit of triangle so instead of just extruding is uh, just use inset and then press control once you figure out the thickness press control to affect the depth so you can see that the extrusion or the shape is much more visible instead of just extruding it straight out Okay, so just just a modeling tip. This will also bake uh, really good instead of the other one, which is extruded uh, extruded straight out. Okay, so now we're going to just shift G D select everything, then apply. This will apply the mirror and everything. And selecting everything. Um I'm gonna at least try and the shader I'm going to use for is you going to use random vert uh vertex color, so I'm going to assign this vertex color before I join this objects. Okay, so get back to object and shift gt extras so there this is now real mesh these are no longer using the solidify and the um mirror modifier shift u for the for random flow extras merge not that not not this one this is boolean just this one just a simple view and we're going to join it to the source source mesh. Okay. Then we're going to 
go to base selection mode select going to name this body and this one is uh, spokes and this one is uh braces i don't know what they're called uh side side um side lines <laughs> side okay uh side uh, bars us uh, wait a minute oh the screws because there's uh we should have joined the screws before joining it <laughs> no matter for the screws if they're separate uh join them first before you use join them all first a single object as a single screw object before using the join objects but it's it's cool so screws one screws two and actually Screws three, intersect, select uh, the uh, dial or the knob, I don't know, knob or dial, let's use dial. Okay, so it's now a single mesh with separate elements inside, which you can quickly select using either the uh, vertex group here or using L because they are a separate set of faces or you can just go to vertex uh, vertex selection mode number one pick a vert and shift g vertex group it will select the corresponding vertex group they belong to this one body or you can use this list because this has names you can just okay i'm going to select the spokes select Okay, now let's try and use the shader that was that comes with the yeah canister grunge. Okay, and activate HDRI. What's this? I'm not gonna speak when it's rendering. It's going this. It's going to distort my voice. So let's preview the material. So that is sure. Uh, sci fi canister asset that you can save in the asset browser. And also, you can pass on to other people because it's not like in guns or anything. It's mostly quads. So you just have to relay the information that. Um, if you view with this, you can see that it's UV or sci-fi canister UV or non-UV or no UVs or procedural textures or uh, UV textures or image textures. So if this were in gone and it needed to be production mesh, then you just have to uh, Repair the topology afterwards. So, I also model like that design first before topology because it's much faster. Even if I'm using reference, I usually just model using tries and ingons at first, then optimize everything afterwards. 
because it's much faster. And actually uh, committing to full quads even at the uh, liquid state of things we're, uh, in the uh, beginning phase where everything is still, you can still experiment at those stages and it's much better to uh, quickly iterate the signs with a much more fluent workflow using ingons than fully committing to uh, full quads. No one's watching you model quads, so yeah, <laughs> don't res don't restrict yourself. Be free. Okay, so let's see if we can. Uh, you have to save this and save this. Save this file and then save this as an asset. But let's see if how far we can use it for um, scatter. But let's place the shift Q extra set origin to the bottom of the mesh. Uh, it's a bit high. It's a bit high poly for scatter, but maybe we can still use it. Okay, um, this is best for low to mid, a low to a bit mid, <laughs> there we go, and uniform scale, and 0.5, because, because the process takes too long, if you slide the slide, if you use sliding on the slider, you have you have to just input the values manually. There we go. To give Blender time to you. Uh, process the operation. So it's not that. Yay. I'll toggle this off. For random sizes, that will be some for uniform scale. Yeah, so that's it for this video. And if you have any questions, use the comment sections below or the links in the description. Thank you for uh, thank you for watching and have a nice day.